GIS Fundamentals, Section 3 Geodesy, Datums, Map Projections, and Coordinate Systems This chapter introduces geodesy, the science of measuring the shape of the Earth, and map projections, the transformation of coordinate locations from the Earth's curved surface onto flat maps. Coordinates are sets of numbers that unambiguously define locations. They are usually x and y values, or perhaps x, y, and z values, or latitude and longitude values unique to a location. But these values are only unique to the location for a specified set of measurements and time. The coordinates depend on how we translate points from a curved earth to a flat map surface. The estimate we use for the real shape of the earth and what set of measurements we reference our coordinates to. The coordinates for the same point will be different for these different choices. As a rule, you should understand the coordinate system used for all of your data and convert all data to the same coordinate system prior to analysis. Early measurements. Eratosthenes, a Greek scholar in Egypt, performed one of the earliest well-founded measurements of the Earth's circumference. He noticed that on the summer solstice, the sun at noon shone to the bottom of a deep well in Syene, near Tropic of Cancer, so that the sun would be exactly overhead during the summer solstice. He also observed that 805 kilometers north in Alexandria, at exactly the same date and time, a vertical post cast a shadow. The shadow post combination defined, defined an angle that was about 7 degrees 12 minutes, or about 1 50th of a circle. Aristosthenes deduced that the Earth must be about 805 multiplied by 50, or about 40,250 kilometers in circumference. Aristosthenes' estimate differs from our modern measurements of the Earth's circumference by less than 4%. Posidonios, another Greek scholar, made an independent estimate of the size of the Earth by measuring angles from local vertical plumb lines to a star near the horizon. Stars visible in the night sky define a uniform reference. The angle between a plumb line and a star location is called a zenith angle. The zenith angle can be measured simultaneously at two locations on Earth, and the difference between the two zenith angles can be used to calculate the circumference of the Earth. Posidonios calculated the difference in the zenith angles at Canopus as about 1 48th of a circle between Rhodes and Alexandria. By estimating these two towns to be about 800 kilometers apart, he calculated the circumference of the Earth to be about 38,600 kilometers. Specifying the ellipsoid. The ellipsoid has two characteristic dimensions. These are the semi-major axis, the radius in the equatorial direction, and the semi-minor axis the radius in the polar direction. The equatorial radius is always greater than the polar radius for the Earth ellipsoid.
global ellipsoids such as the GRS80 or WGS84 are now preferred and most widely used. The geoid. As noted in the previous section, the true shape of the Earth varies slightly from the mathematically smooth surface of an ellipsoid. Differences in the density of the Earth cause variation in the strength of the gravitational pull, in turn causing regions to dip or bulge above or below a reference ellipsoid. This undulating shape is called a geoid. Official ellipsoids include Airy in 1830, Bessel in 1841, Clark in 1866, Clark in 1880, the International in 1924, the Australian in 1965, WGS 72, GRS 80, and WGS 84. Mean sea level may be higher or lower than the geoidal surface because ocean currents, temperature, salinity, and wind variations can cause persistent high or low areas in the ocean. Because we have two reference surfaces, a geoid and an ellipsoid, we also have two bases from which to measure height. Elevation is typically defined as the distance above a geoid. This elevation above a geoid is also called the orthometric height. Heights above an ellipsoid are often referred to as ellipsoidal height. The difference between ellipsoidal height and orthometric height has various names, including geoidal height and geoidal separation. The geoid is a measured and interpolated surface and not a mathematically defined surface. The geoid surface is measured using a number of methods initially by a combination of plumb bob, a weight suspended by a string that indicates the direction of gravity, and horizontal and vertical distance measurements, and later with various types of gravimeters, devices that measure the gravitational force. The GRACE experiment initiated with the launch of twin satellites in 2002. Distances between a pair of satellites are constantly measured as they orbit the Earth. The satellites are pulled closer or drift farther from the Earth due to the variation in the gravity field. Because the orbital path changes slightly each day, we eventually have nearly complete Earth coverage of the strength of gravity, and hence the location of the reference gravitational surface. Horizontal Datums We establish a set of points on Earth for which the horizontal and vertical positions have been accurately determined. These accurately determined points and associated measured and mathematical surfaces are datums, references against which we measure all other locations. These well-surveyed points allow us to specify a reference frame including an origin or starting point. Most surveys in the United States 
are related back to high accuracy points maintained by the National Geodetic Survey, or NGS. A geodetic datum is a reference surface. A geodetic datum consists of two major components. The first component is an ellipsoid with a spherical or a three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system and an origin. A useful datum must include a set of points and lines that have been painstakingly surveyed and that may be used as the starting points for subsequent detailed local surveys. Some authors define the datum as a specified reference surface and a realization of a datum as that surface plus a physical network of precisely measured points. In this nomenclature, the measured points describe a terrestrial reference frame. This clearly separates the theoretical surface, benchmark the reference system or datum from the terrestrial reference frame, a specific set of measured points that help fix the datum. While this more precise language may avoid some confusion, Datum will continue to refer to both the defined surface and the various realizations of each datum. Precisely surveyed points are commonly known as benchmarks. There are two main errors of datums, those created before satellites geodesy and those after. A triangulation survey commonly used prior to satellite positioning. Triangulation surveys were adopted because we can create them through optical angle measurements with few surface distance measurements. An advantage in the late 18th and early 19th centuries when many datums were first developed. Datum shift is expected with datum adjustments. Commonly used datums. Three main series of horizontal datums have been used widely in North America. The North American datum of 1927 or NAD 27. NAD27 is a legacy datum, but older data may be stored in this datum. The North American datum of 1983, NAD83, is the successor datum to NAD27. We place the 1986 after the NAD83 designator to indicate the year or version of the datum adjustment. Between 1989 and 2004, the NGS collaborated with other federal agencies, state and local governments, and private surveyors in creating the High Accuracy Reference Networks, or HARNs, also known as the High Precision Geodetic Networks, HPGN in each state and most U.S. territories. The NAD 83-2007 datum may be viewed as a successor to the NAD 83 HARN. The World Geodetic System of 1984, WGS84, 
is a second set of datums developed and primarily used by the U.S. Department of Defense. It was introduced in 1987 based on Doppler satellite measurements of the Earth and is used in most DoD maps and positional data. The WGS-84 ellipsoid is similar to the GRS-80 ellipsoid. The third set of datums, commonly used worldwide and increasingly in North America, is known as the International Terrestrial Reference Frames, ITRF, with datum realizations of the International Terrestrial Reference System, ITRS. A primary purpose for the ITRS is to estimate continental drift and crustal deformation by measuring the location and velocity of points using a worldwide network of measurement locations. Much data are collected in WGS-84 datums using GNSS such as GPS. Most data are converted to a local or national datum before use in a GIS. There is currently a plan to transition the NAD83 system to one compatible with the ITRF although a specific timetable has not been published. Datum Transformations Converting geographic coordinates from one datum to another typically requires a datum transformation. The National Geodetic Survey created NADCON, a datum transformation tool to convert between NAD27 and NAD83-1986 datums. In past times, a Molodensky transformation was common using a system of equations with three or five parameters. More currently, a Helmert transformation is employed using 7 or 14 parameters. Because of tectonic plate movement, the most precise geodetic measurements refer to the epoch, or fixed time period, at which the point was measured. All data should be converted to the same coordinate system, based on the same datum. If not, data may misalign. Vertical Heights and Datums A vertical datum is a reference that we use for measuring heights. Orthometric heights are standard heights above our reference geoid. Orthometric heights are what most people mean when they say a height is measured above a generic or global average mean sea level. For much of history prior to satellites, leveling surveys were used for establishing heights. Most leveling surveys from the late 1700s through the mid-20th century employed trigonometric leveling. This method uses optical instruments and trigonometry to measure changes in height.
we stopped using mean sea level because it varies too much in time and space. The mean varies in time because of daily through multi-decadal solar and lunar cycles, and across the globe because of persistent differences in water density with temperature, salinity, and ocean currents. Also, global sea level has been rising. Orthometric heights, elevations, in North America are defined as the vertical distance measured from our adopted reference geoid to the ground surface height. Generally, we use orthometric heights to specify elevation. However, when calculating flood risk near the ocean, we typically use heights referenced to the local mean sea level. Geoids have been fit for North America infrequently before 1990 and several times since. The first continental vertical datum in North America was the National Geodetic Vertical Datum of 1929, also referred to as NGVD-29. The latest North American datum is labeled NAVD-88. improved surface, aerial, and satellite gravity measurements, particularly the NASA GRACE and ESA GOCE G -O -C -E, satellite missions have led to a dense network of gravity measurements, including regions far from coastal tidal stations. V datum. The United States National Geodetic Survey, NGS, has created a tool, V datum, to estimate conversions among vertical datums in the U.S. Dynamic heights. Dynamic heights measure the change in gravitational pull from a given equipotential surface. Dynamic heights are important when interested in water levels and flows across elevations. Two distinct points at water's edge on a large lake often do not have the same elevations. Often, they are different orthometric heights above our reference geoid. An orthometric height is the distance in the direction of gravitational pull from the geoid up to a point. The geoid is a specified gravity value and equipotential surface where the pull of gravity is at some specified level. The water level in a still bathtub, pond, or lake is at the same equipotential surface at one end as another. As the equipotential surfaces converge or become denser, the water surface seems to dip below our fixed orthometric height. Water follows an equipotential surface. Map projections and coordinate systems. A map projection is a systematic rendering of locations from the curved Earth's surface 
onto a flat map surface. Projection equations must also be specified in the backward direction, from projected coordinates to geographic coordinates, if they are to be useful. Note that the use of a projection defines a Cartesian coordinate system and hence creates a grid north. Distortions are unavoidable when making flat maps because of the transition from a complexly curved earth surface to a flat or simply curved map surface. Portions of the rendered earth surface must be compressed or stretched to fit onto the map. An approximation of the distance distortion may be obtained for any projection by comparing grid coordinate distances to great circle distances. A great circle distance is a distance measured on a spheroid or ellipsoid and in a plane through the Earth's center. A straight line between two points shown on a projected map is usually not a straight line nor the shortest path when traveling on the surface of the Earth. Conversely, the shortest distance between points on the Earth's surface is likely to appear as a curved line on a projected map. Most map projections are based on a developable surface, a geometric shape onto which the Earth's surface is projected. Cones, cylinders, and planes are the most common developable surfaces. A plane is already flat, and cones and cylinders may be mathematically cut and unrolled to develop a flat surface. Projections may be characterized according to the shape of the developable surface, such as conic for a cone, cylindrical for a cylinder, and azimuthal for a plane. The orientation of the developable surface may also change among proje projections. For example, the axis of a cylinder may coincide with the poles and be equatorial, or the axis may pass through the equator and be transverse. Note that while most common map projections used for spatial data in a GIS are based on a developable surface, many map projections are not. Projections with names such as pseudo-cylindrical, mile-wide, sinusoidal, and good homosign are examples. These projections often specify a direct mathematical, mathematical projection from an ellipsoid onto a flat surface. Common Map Projections in GIS The Lambert Conformal Conic and the Transverse Mercator are among the most common projection types used for spatial data in North America and in much of the world. The cone in the Lambert Conformal Conic intersects the ellipsoid along two arcs typically parallels of latitude. These lines of intersection are known as standard parallels. Distortion in a Lambert conformal conic projection is typically smallest near the standard parallels where the developable surface intersects the Earth. One property of the Lambert conformal conic projection is a low distortion band running east to west direction between the standard parallels. The cylinder in the transverse mercator commonly intersects the Earth ellipsoid along a single north to south tangent or along two secant lines. A line parallel to and midway between the secants 
is often called the central meridian. The central meridian extends north and south through transverse Mercator projections. As with the Lambert conformal conic, the transverse Mercator projection has a band of low distortion, but this band runs in a north to south direction. Distortion is least near the lines of intersection. Transverse Mercator projections are often used for areas that extend in a north to south direction as there is little added distortion extending in that direction. The State Plane Coordinate System The State Plane Coordinate System is a standard set of projections for the United States. The State Plane Coordinate System specifies positions in a Cartesian coordinate system for each state. There are one or more zones in each state with slightly different projection parameters in each state plane zone. Multiple state plane zones are used to limit distortion errors due to map projections. One state plane projection zone may suffice for small states. Larger states commonly require several zones. The state plane coordinate system is based on two types of map projections, the Lambert conformal conic and the transverse Mercator projections. The transverse Mercator specifies a central meridian. This central meridian defines grid north in the projection. A line along the central meridian points to geographic and grid north and specifies the Cartesian grid direction for the map projection. All parallels of latitude and all meridians except the central meridian are curved for a transverse Mercator projection and hence these lines do not parallel the grid X or Y directions. More than one version of the state plane coordinate system has been defined. Changes were introduced with the adoption of the North American Datum of 1983. Prior to 1983, the state plane projections were based on NAD 27. State plane zones are sometimes identified by the Federal Information Processing codes, and most codes are similar across NAD 27 and NAD 83 versions. There are two different measurements for a foot, the U.S. survey foot and the international foot. The U.S. survey foot is slightly longer. They are both uh, one foot equals 0.3048 meters. And the U.S. survey foot uh, has more decimal places and is slightly longer. The Universal Transverse Mercator Coordinate System. The Universal Transverse Mercator UTM Coordinate System is another standard coordinate distinct from the state plane system. The UTM is a global coordinate system based on the transverse Mercator projection. It is widely used in the United States and other parts of North America, and is used in other countries. The UTM system divides the Earth into zones that are 6 degrees wide in longitude, 
and extend from 80 degrees south latitude to 84 degrees north latitude. UTM zones are numbered from 1 to 60 in an easterly direction starting at longitude 180 degrees west. Zones are further split north and south of the equator. Distances in the UTM system are specified in meters north and east of a zone origin. The Y values are known as northings and increase in a northerly, nor, northerly direction. The X values are referred to as eastings and increase in an easterly direction. The equator is used as the northing origin for all north zones. South zones have a false northing value added to ensure all coordinates within a zone are positive. Continental and Global Projections Most worldwide projections are used for visualization but not quantitative analysis. There are a number of projections that have been widely used for the world. These include variants of the Mercator, Good, Milewide, and Miller projections, among others. There is a trade-off that must be made in global projections between a continuous map surface and distortion. Lambert conformal conic or other conic projections are often chosen for areas with a long east to west dimension Transverse cylindrical projections are often used for large north-south continents. Conversion among coordinate systems. Conversion from one projected coordinate system to another requires using the inverse and forward projection equations. We may convert among most coordinate systems by passing through a geographic system. Care must be taken when converting among projections that use different datums. If appropriate, we must insert a datum transformation when converting from one projected coordinate system to another. A datum transformation is a calculation of the change in geographic coordinates when moving from one datum to another. Converting from one projection to another with the same datum and version is a two-step process. The projected coordinates are converted to geographic coordinates and the geographic coordinates are converted to the new projected coordinates. Converting from one projection to another with different datums is a three-step process. Projected coordinates are converted to geographic coordinates, which are then converted to geographic coordinates in another datum, which are converted to the new projected coordinates. Users of GIS software should be careful when applying coordinate projection tools because the datum transformation may be omitted or an inappropriate datum manually or automatically selected. For some software, the projection tool does not check or maintain information on the datum of the input spatial layer. The Public Land Survey System The Public Land Survey System, or PLSS The PLSS is not a coordinate system, but PLSS points are often used as reference points in the United States, so the PLSS should be well understood. 
the PLSS divided lands by north-south lines, six miles apart, running parallel to a principal meridian. East-west lines were surveyed perpendicular to these north-south lines, also at six mile intervals. These lines form square townships. Each township was further subdivided into 36 sections, each section approximately a mile on a side. Each section was subdivided further to quarter sections, one half mile on a side, or sixteenth sections, one quarter mile on a side. Sections were numbered in a zigzag pattern from 1 to 36, beginning in the northeast corner. The PLSS is a standardized method for designating and describing the location of land parcels. It was used for the initial surveys over most of the United States after the early 1800s. Therefore, nearly all land outside the original 13 colonies uses the PLSS. The PLSS was developed for a number of reasons. First, it was seen as a method to remedy many of the shortcomings of meets and bounds surveying, the most common method for surveying prior to the adoption of the PLSS. Meets and bounds describe a parcel relative to features on the landscape. It's sometimes supplemented with angle or distance measurements. Meets and bounds was used in colonial times, but parcel descriptions were often ambiguous. GIS Fundamentals, Section 3. Geodesy, Projections, and Coordinate Systems, Section Summary. We define positions on the globe via geodesy and surveying. We convert these locations to flat surfaces via map projections. We begin by modeling the Earth's shape with an ellipsoid. An ellipsoid differs from the geoid, a gravitationally defined Earth's surface, and these differences cause some early confusion in the adoption of standard global ellipsoids. There's a long history of ellipsoidal measurement, and we have arrived at our best estimates of global and regional ellipsoids after collecting large, painstakingly developed sets of precise surface and astronomical measurements. These measurements are combined into datums, and these datums are used to specify the coordinate locations of points on the surface of the Earth. Map projections are a systematic rendering of points from the curved Earth's surface onto a flat map surface. A datum transformation is often required when performing map projections. Datum transformations account for differences in geographic coordinates due to changes in the shape or origin of the spheroid, and in some cases to datum adjustments. Datum transformation should be applied as a step in the map projection process when input and output datums differ.